Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? How you feeling? Excuse the bad hair day, but that's how we roll here in Search and Report. Welcome to this week's episode. Um, it's been an eventful week, as you can tell by whatever it is, either the thumbnail or the title. But let's just get straight into the first news item of the week. This week in gaming, we got, well, this week in Nintendo more than anything. Nintendo's been like dropping us, it has been dropping news like crazy. They, they neglected us for like two or three months and they're like, here you go. Here you go, my babies, my underfed, malnourished babies. But Nintendo announced that a new Zelda is coming in less than two months, or about two months. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is the new game from Nintendo, and it is coming out on November 20th. I did a whole trailer analysis um, up in my channel, and I'll link it up here. Please go ahead and check it out if you want to go more in depth as to what this game is going to be about. And... Honestly, I am super excited for this game. It's 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 an announcement that I wasn't expecting I'm not a huge fan of the Hyrule Warriors games. I, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the Warriors um, Genre type of games, but it is confirmed from Nintendo that this game will be canon meaning that This will be a trilogy Breath of the Wild is officially now a trilogy with the second Breath of the Wild coming I don't know yet probably next year probably the year after that we don't know yet but this game is gonna follow link and the champions and Princess Zelda a um, hundred years before the event that happened before the events that happened in breath of the wild this is a game developed by Koei Tecmo games in a very close partnership with Nintendo so I think this is probably the second or third time that Nintendo has ever lent the Zelda IP to a third party developer and I find that amazing. I think it's gonna be great. This is great news. Nintendo is finally branching out and is 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 not too conservative with their IPs nowadays. So this is nothing but good news. Hopefully we'll get uh, some more information on September 26th, which is where Nintendo is actually gonna be presenting, well not necessarily Nintendo directly, but probably Koei Tecmo. Um, they're going to be presenting this game at the Tokyo Game Show. And this is something notable because this is apparently the first time that Nintendo has ever participated in this show. Here's to hoping that going forward, this is Nintendo's way to kind of open up their IPs to a wider public, open up their games and be able to reach out to a wider audience outside of just, you know, Nintendo fans. <laughs> So all around good news, Nintendo is currently constantly dropping new stuff for the new IPs. Um, as we all know, this coming up Friday, we have the release of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I will be streaming that on the Twitch channel. Please make sure to follow me on Twitch. But yes, hopefully we'll get more uh, gameplay at least. We'll get some gameplay footage on Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity on September 26th. And for our second news item of the week, we finally got a reveal of the Xbox Series S. I, I would call it more of a leak because Xbox kind of had to swallow their pride and just give out the information regarding this this more compact version of the Xbox of, of Xbox's next generation consoles. Um, it was leaked. A few days before actually I think it was leaked the day before they announced the Xbox Series S I do believe they did it out of necessity because news was getting out there news was going wild but we did finally get a look at the new Xbox Series S and at pricing and I just want to give props to the Xbox team um, especially the the marketing the social media manager for xbox because they handled that leak extremely well they released this image of a very concerned puppet <laughs> which kind of you know made me laugh and and actually made me interested in in the in the xbox series s because i found that to be xbox's brand going forward they seem to be Handling missteps left and right with this release of the next-gen console, but here are I'll be showing here some some images regarding the Xbox Series S 
I can't necessarily say that I'm a big fan of the design. I'm not a big fan of this design of the Xbox Series X, but I will say it does look sleek. It does look pretty sleek. It's extremely small. It is an extremely small console. This is of course the all digital version, just much like the PS5 is gonna be having its own all digital version. Um, it is the smallest Xbox ever. It's nearly 60% smaller than the Xbox Series S, but it is basically the same. It has the same performance specs as the Xbox Series X. It'll be interesting to see just how well it actually plays in comparison to the Xbox Series X. Um, my only concern with this is the storage size and the differences between the two models. One model is basically half, has half of the storage size. Xbox did announce that they will have upgradable storage options, but they are coming out to be a little bit pricey. There's been some, some rumors saying that uh, a lot of this storage is gonna be upwards of $200, which to me, in my opinion, seems a little bit extreme, but it'll be interesting to see if there's a method to install non-Xbox branded storage. I hope so. I mean, these are solid state drives, so hopefully there's some loophole somewhere around there because $200 is too much, regardless of who you are. $200 for storage is extremely, extremely expensive. But I'm excited. I, I feel that Xbox is at a very rough start to this next gen release, but they kind of seem to be picking up it, picking up the pace a little bit, especially with the release. They're handling extremely well. They're being completely transparent and completely open. So I give them props for that. And now for our third news item of the week. This is a combination of both bad and good news. Good news because we did get a Kingdom Hearts game for the Switch, but we kind of got confirmation that there is no plans of any more Kingdom Hearts games for the Switch in the foreseeable future. Um, here, Nintendo Enthusiast reports there will be no more Kingdom Hearts games planned for the Switch, but other Nomura games are possible. Through a translator, Tetsuya Nomura confirmed there are currently no specific plans for more Kingdom Hearts games on Switch. Square Enix did consider ports of existing games for Switch in the past, but found that it was technologically difficult, which I find I, f I find it to be a complete lie, a complete and utter lie, because <laughs> wasn't there Kingdom Hearts games for the PlayStation 2 back in the day? like? I'm sure the Switch is more than capable of handling graphics from that era. Here, Nomura further states that he believes Nintendo Switch is a very appealing piece of hardware and he had always wanted to do something on this console. Additionally, while he cannot speak for games at Square Enix that he isn't associated with, Nomura did express that it is possible another game of his could come to Switch. So this is where like the good and bad news kind of comes hand in hand. He's not completely denying that there won't be any more Kingdom Hearts games coming to the Switch, but he does deny that currently any games tied to, you know, Nomura are not planned for the Switch. I've never been a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. I'm a big fan of Square Enix, but I, they, I always find, it to be, find them to be a little bit complicated to follow, but if more games start coming to the Switch, I think Kingdom Hearts could have a very good foothold on the market for the switch i mean it has everything it has cute characters it has an interesting story and it's a jrpg <laughs> i mean what else do you want but well i'll be on the lookout for more news for this because i know how much spill there is between kingdom hearts fans and nintendo switch owners and for our final news item of the week this is a little bit of a meaty one so this is why i kept it at the end if, if you already saw the Ubisoft Forward event, you can go ahead and skip it. Please just make sure to like and subscribe the video. Please, 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 as we make our way to, towards 200 subscribers. But I'm gonna go through a quick summary of the Ubisoft Forward event. We got loads and loads of new trailers and new games announced. So I'll just go over this really, really quick. We got Roller Champions for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, and Mobile in early 2021. 
This game is some sort of like a uh, roller skate derby type of game. It looks very fun. Um, I won't say it looks extremely fast paced. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more fast paced, but here's a uh, here Gamatsu gave us a really uh, short rundown of what the game is actually about. Um, as a roller champion, you compete in a team of three against three. The rules are simple. Take the ball, make a lap while maintaining team possession, and score. You can go for more points by completing additional laps before attempting a goal. After each game, you gain fans, customize your character, and ultimately unlock impressive fan celebrations. Roll up to glory. This, this seems like a great sports arcades game. Um, I know for a fact we've been missing those during this generation of games. Um, it kind of reminds me a lot of the games that we used to play back in like the N64 era, um, the GameCube era with like SSX Tricky, NBA Jam, just, just a whole different group of arcade sports games that are been fairly underrepresented during this current gen um this looks like a great game i think it's gonna be a very fun party game i don't i don't see it becoming a competitive esports game but i could be wrong hopefully you know this game is well optimized for the switch because if it is i will definitely be getting it for the switch um another game that got announced during the ubisoft forward event is immortals phoenix rising which launches on december 3rd this game is coming out for the playstation 5 the xbox series the playstation 4 xbox one switch and pc a pc and stadia of course i can't forget about stadia because apparently people are still using stadia <laughs> So yeah, this game was first announced as Gods and Monsters. Now, I don't know the reasoning behind the name change. I think it the new name is a little bit confusing. It's it's it, it seems not very descriptive of what this game is about. I mean, Immortals Phoenix Rising can mean a whole loads of things. It doesn't really necessarily make me think about like, you know, Greek mythology at all. Um, Gods and Monsters seems a little bit more, a better descriptor of the game. Um, but this obviously is an open world uh, game from Ubisoft. It obviously draws parallels with Breath of the Wild. There's been a lot of comparisons made with the game. It obviously draws inspiration from the game. I'm excited for this game. I do not know if I'm going to get it after release. I might wait for it a little bit. As, as I say, if it comes to the Switch and it's well optimized, I definitely would get it for that. It seems that the graphics are something that will play well with the, gra with the Switch. I feel the Switch will be able to reproduce a, a fairly good quality image from this game. But here Gematsu as well gives us a quick rundown about what this game is about. Immortals Phoenix Rising is a fresh and witty take on the open world action adventure genre featuring dynamic action, combat, and stories inspired by Greek mythology. Roam freely across a beautifully stylized world and use extraordinary abilities gifted by the gods against fearsome mythological monsters. Treacherous trials, heroic feats, and the very underworld itself await your bravery. This game looks like it's it's extremely fun. I am definitely going to be checking this one out if it's well optimized for the Switch. A third game, which a lot of people were kind of speculating was coming, is actually coming. Prince of Persia: The Sands of Time remake announced for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This game, of course, is a remaster of the Prince of Persia game. Uh, Hiragamatsu describes it as a classic reborn, you know, experience the original epic tale of the prince on his journey for redemption, travel back in time with the return of the prince's original voice actor, Yuri Lowenthal, and discover a brave new Farah. I wonder just how well it will, re it will be received. I know a lot of people have been a little bit skeptical about the graphics, given that, you know, it is a fairly old game. Um, but it is remastered, so we'll see what, what the actual reception is for this game. This game is going to be coming out on January 21st of 2021, so be on the lookout for it if you are a Prince of Persia fan. And another game that people just, I think they could, they just, people just didn't see this one coming at all. I, I didn't see it coming. Um, but we got Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game complete edition. This game is coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, and Stadia this holiday. This game is infamous for 
being, you know, a lost game of some sort. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World was first launched digitally for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in August 10th, but was the least delisted in December of 2014. This game is a classic beat em up type style of game. I, I, I've never played this game. I don't really. I wasn't a big fan of the Scott Pilgrim series, but I mean, it does look pretty well made. It looks, it looks fun. It looks something that, you know, would be a lot of fun to play with, you know, a friend or a family member. But I'm excited, at least because it's it's something that I know is, is a classic, is a cult, is a, it has a cult following of some sort. So it'll be interesting to see just how well optimized it is for the new, for the current generations. And for our final game announced, this is a game that I don't know if I'm excited for. I, as I've said, I'm a huge fan of the sports arcades games, the, the sports arcades genre, but Ubisoft announced a massively multiplayer outdoor sports games called Riders Republic for the PS5, Xbox Series, a PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Stadia. Uh, Hiro Gamacho describes the game as live out the writer's fantasy as you roam free in a huge vibrant open world always buzzing with other players around you immerse yourself in iconic American national parks including Bryce Canyon Yosemite Valley Mammoth Mountain all matched up for you to shred squat up with your friends and compete in a wide range of multiplayer modes feel a rush of downhill races dominate maps in team versus team competitions or give it your best shot in epic mass an epic mass player versus player races with more than 50 other players. This game looks very interesting to me. It looks like it can be a lot of fun, but it also looks to me like it might not live up to expectations. Regardless, as I said, I always welcome developers trying out new things, trying out ridiculous ideas. As I said, I love sports arcade games and, and they're usually very, very ridiculous. Um, but they're usually a lot of fun, you know, regardless of just how graphically amazing they look. Sports arcade games are probably one of the funnest video game genres out there. Here, Gematsu further says you can play with or against your friends in, say, multiplayer modes. Enjoy a full-fledged multiplayer experience with a wide variety of modes. You got competitive races and trick challenges, mass starts, community gens, multiplayer arenas, online cups, etc., etc. You can also jump into a mass social playground. We'll see how how well this game is is optimized, how well this game plays on current and next gen consoles. But I am excited. Ubisoft is is looks like they have a full roster of great games coming for uh, this current gen and next gen. So hopefully they all live up to expectations. But with that, folks, I've been Drew Fernie, and this has been this week's Search and Report. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down and let me know what you think I can do to make these episodes better. As I said, any and all feedback is helpful. Links to my socials are down below. Make sure to follow me on Twitch where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and if time permits, sometimes on Sundays. I'm an affiliate over there, so any and all support over there is greatly, greatly appreciated. I take streaming rather seriously. Please take care of each other, but most importantly, take care of yourself. See you next week. Peace.